Hey guys, welcome back. This is Life of an EV part six. Uh, we're gonna be talking about electric vehicle maintenance. So I contemplated whether I wanted to do cost, whether I wanted to do, you know, what needs changed. Um, and we talk about cost a lot. So, you know, I'm just gonna break it down into what you're gonna be looking forward to maintenance wise on an EV. Um, so first of all, I wanna break down the battery for you because that's people's biggest concern is, you know, we're gonna be spending $30,000 to replace our battery, which Batteries are expensive. So I'm gonna give you a few tips to kind of maintain the health of your battery and get the longest life out of it. Um, so this here is a picture of an electric vehicle battery. Um, sometimes it's different. You'll see rows of five um, stacked on top of each other sometimes. So this is a, a nice generic picture. So there's a lot going on. Um, I'm gonna break it down into two things that we're gonna look at specifically. So we're gonna look at the battery arrays and the high voltage lines. So anything orange is a high voltage line. I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not mess with the high voltage lines. You'll see them in hybrids as well. They're very danger dangerous. Let a Ford technician um, handle that. Um, but in this diagram, that, that's what the orange is. Um, you also see these arrays. So that's where we're gonna be talking about a little bit more. So these arrays are the cells of the battery. Um, you know, there, there's typically 10 to 12 in a Ford EV. Um, let's say one of these goes bad. It happens, um, you know, it, it, I'm not gonna beat around the bush there, it, it does happen. You know, one of these arrays can go bad. So what, what happens? Um, so if one of these arrays goes bad, its partner also has to be replaced. So the one adjacent to it has to be replaced with it. Um, underneath these arrays, there is, I'm just gonna put it in simple terms, there's a plate there. Um, and each one of these batteries has thermal paste underneath of it. That way you can transfer the heat from the battery and cool it down. Um, because these things do get very hot. I mean, if you, Take your phone, for example, when you're, when you're plugged in with your phone, your phone will heat up. Um, so there needs to be that heat exchange to cool these batteries down. So you, know, you replace two of these arrays at a time, and then once they're replaced, you kind of have to build the battery life. Say your battery is 70%, these have to be charged to match that battery life. Um, and you know, for Technicians have a computer system that'll that'll do that for them. Um, that way, your your battery's up and running. So, you know, this is what we don't want to happen. You know, we don't want we just don't want to have to replace our batteries. Obviously. So, what what things can we do to save our battery health? So, temperature is the first one. So, you know, extremely cold and extremely warm. Um, or extremely hot um, are the battery's kryptonite. So whatever you can do to prevent it from being exposed to that, um, as well as preconditioning, like I mentioned before, you know, preheat your battery in cold temperatures and um, gets it ready for the drive. So I know there's some scenarios where it's hard to do this, but as much as you can, try to try to keep it away from extreme temperatures. Another thing we're looking at is charging. So DC fast chargers. Um, can be harmful to your battery over time. You know, if you're continually re relying on DC fast chargers, you know, it can um, decrease your battery's lifespan. You know, and there's a lot of people that just depend on public charging. There are level two public chargers that you can use. They do take longer, um, but you know, that's another alternative. We're also gonna look at battery usage and charging. So batteries are picky, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. So batteries like being comfortable and they like being, you know, not fully dead, not fully charged. You know, there's usually between 10% and 90% is where like they like to live. Um, so, you know, we're not trying to fully charge it to 100% every day um, or run it completely dead. So as long as you try to stay in that 10 to 90%. Um, long road trips are the exception to this rule. So if you are planning a long road trip, you can charge up to 100% 
get the most out of your range uh, for your trip. But as you're as you go on your trip, you probably charge. You'll probably charge up to eighty percent because you're trying to get there faster. Um, you know, look back at the charging video. I explain that a little bit more in depth. Brake and tire maintenance. So, you know, they still have brakes just like regular gas engine vehicles, and obviously they still have tires. So what's different? So with brakes, you have your regenerative braking. So why is what's this have to do with maintenance? So regenerative braking is using your motor. Um, to kind of slow the vehicle. So, you know, you're using your vehicle's kinetic energy to slow the vehicle instead of the hydraulic brakes. Um, you know, a lot of people think regenerative braking is you're using the friction from the, the brakes to, you know, recapture the heat, and no. Um, you're not using the hydraulic brakes at all in regenerative braking. You know, the hydraulic brakes are kind of your second step. So you're using your brakes less, um, which means you don't have to replace them as much. Um, driving behavior kind of combats that. Um, you know, if you are a person who's less gradual on the brake pedal, you know, you're not a nice, easy stopper, um, you may be using the hydraulic brakes more, which decreases the lifespan of the brakes. So it's a lot on how you drive, too. Uh, let's talk about tires. So uh, most people think, you know, battery vehicles don't have engines, so they're lighter. Um, but they have a massive battery. So, you know, if you're looking at two comparable vehicles, um, one's a BEV, one's a regular ICE engine, um, your electric vehicle is going to be about a thousand pounds heavier. So the weight of the vehicle um, can increase the wear on your tire, you know, on your tires. Um, something that most EV owners um, kind of invest in is low resistance tires. So low resistance tires. Um, are exactly what they're named after. You know, you're just, you have less resistance on the road. Easiest way to put it, um, which means you get the most out of your range. So low resistance tires have less roll resistance, giving you the most range out of your EV. Um, they are more expensive. I'm not gonna lie to you there. They're a little bit more expensive than your regular all weather. But if you're a person that's range conscious, this might be a good investment. Some miscellaneous, um, maintenance requirements from an EV. You still have hoses, um, bushings. So you, you have rubber items. Um, those rubber items are still exposed to an air, to air, just like on a regular gas vehicle. Um, so you still may see dry riding. You know, it's not, um, you're not prone to it. it it's, it's gonna happen um, over time, just like it does on a gas vehicle. So those repairs still will be need to maintain, but, um, you know, just like on a gas vehicle, that this doesn't happen in the first three to five years. This is down the road. Um, salt damage. So we see it a lot here in Pennsylvania, um, you know, up north, you might see it south, you might not see it as much. Um, so what they recommend is to spray the salt from your car at least twice a year to prevent rust and corrosion. Um, you know, you don't want to corrode anything obviously, especially on a, on a gas vehicle. Um, I recommend more than twice a year. Um, anytime my car, if they salt the roads, I'm washing my car immediately after. Um, it's just a common practice, but you still, have to, you still have to deal with it on an EV. So cabin filter. So still need to be replaced um, to maintain the quality of the air coming into the cabin. Um, you know, same as gas vehicle. This this might be one of the first things that need to replace because you don't have an oil fil you don't have to have an oil change. You don't need an oil filter. Um, there's no engine components. You don't need fuel injectors, um, which is a lot less on the maintenance costs. So, you know, every six months you're you're getting an oil change. You don't have that cost with an EV. Um, you may again need your tires rotated, but no oil change, no oil filter. Um, fluids and coolant. So, you know, you're still going to have fluids with a EV. You have your, your brake fluid. You still have coolant. Like I said before, there's a coolant that runs under the batteries to keep them cool. You know, the inverter. There, there's a lot of liquid cold items on the EV. Um, so these things aren't, these things don't need replaced, um, you know, every six months. 
something that your Ford technician will keep an eye on um, you know, as you bring it in for service throughout its lifespan. Um, the coolant that EVs use is a little bit different than a regular gas engine. Um, you want something with low conductivity um, because in the case that it does leak into the battery, you don't, you don't want that. Um, so something that has a low conductivity level um, and, and they, they make coolants for it. But again, your Ford technician will take care of that. He knows what to put in it. Um, but with EVs, your maintenance cost is typically a third of what you pay on a gas engine vehicle. Your routine maintenance is about a third. So, you know, you, you do have a lot of savings in maintenance. A lot of people are scared of, you know, what if the battery goes bad? So I showed you what the arrays look like. Um, you know, it, it can be scary. You do have your eight year, 100,000 mile warranty. Um, so I, I hope I went over some misconceptions, um, even just giving you some information about, you know, owning an EV, what, what am I going to have to worry about, you know, six months, one year from now. Um, so main thing are your tires. Like I said, brakes, you know, you'll, you'll get a little more life in a regular vehicle, but, um, I hope that helps. Um, always. SchultzFord.com.